Hi everybody, in this video I'm gonna use the density function to make some trap hi-hats using different subdivisions. So in a previous video I just talked about sort of a basic introduction to the density function work and how it works. Uh, I would recommend checking that one out if, before getting into this one. Uh, you'll notice I have three different drum sounds that I'm importing into this one. Reason being, I just feel like this kind of captures a trap sound a little bit better than the built-in samples onto Sonic Pi, uh, but you could easily do this with those sounds as well. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make a function that uses the density function within it, uh, which I can pass different arguments uh, that are gonna be the subdivisions that I wanna use. So I also have a video that I made about just how to make your own functions in Sonic Pi. So if you're unfamiliar with doing that, uh, I would recommend checking that video out. So the way we make a function is first, I'm just gonna use the word define. So this is going to define our function. I'm gonna we have to give our function a name, so I'm going to call this function hats. Now when we make a function, we it is a block, so meaning I need a do and an end, and then all the code inside of that do and end is going to be uh, the function. Now I'm going to, in this, do the density, okay? And density takes an argument, and I'm actually going to use uh, d as that argument. Um, which will be a parameter that I'm going to add to my function here. So instead of me hard coding a number in here, I'm gonna create an argument in my function, which I will then pass to the function whenever I call it. So that's why I'm putting D here instead of a number. That number will be chosen whenever I call this hats function later on in the program. So I need to do, a, do an end here for this. So in this, I'm going to sample, and I'm going to use the hat sample, and that is this uh, sample here that I have, which is just a closed hi-hat sound from a 808 sample pack. So I'm gonna sample that, and then I'm going to sleep for one. Now, I could, if I wanted, also maybe make this a bit more of a diverse function by maybe creating an argument for what sample and I could pass a sample to it as well. But I'm just gonna, gonna keep it simple with this right now and just pass this density. So now I have this function called hats. Um, and so now I'm gonna create a live loop called hats uh, do end here. And inside this, all I have to do now is I call hats and then I pass my argument. So let's say hats two, all right? So the way this breaks down is this two is now being passed here. And so this would be density two, sample hat, and then sleep for one. So remember the density function basically takes the sleep time that you have and uh, divides it by whatever the density that you passed here. Um, another way to look at it is you take whatever the BPM is that you are at and it multiplies that BPM by that. But basically, the way I like to look at it is I am just sort of subdividing a beat into whatever number I pass here to the density. So in this case, two. So I should hear two sounds for every beat. So if I run this, so you see here in this live loop, I don't even have to have sleep or anything because that's been taken care of here in the function, so now I have this hats thing, okay? Now, this isn't really gonna do as good as far as um, any kind of drum beat unless I have like my kick and my snare as well. So I'm very quickly gonna make a live loop of drums. I'm gonna sync that with my hats loop as well. And then I am going to make a very crude um, drum beat here. Now, this isn't normally the way I like to do my drum beats. Um, in fact, I have another tutorial I did on how to make use arrays to make sort of grid style drum beats like you might see in a digital audio workspace uh, or some kind of grid setup like that. So I'd recommend you check that out. But just for um, real 
of simplicity's sake here, I'm gonna just have a very simple drum beat here. Okay, so I'm just gonna kick and snare. So if I run this, okay, so now I have this pretty simple drum beat here. So what I can now do with my hats function is I can change this number and that's gonna change the subdivision, which is basically gonna be how many times I hear the hi-hat on a beat. So when I had it at two, I was hearing it twice on every beat, which would, in music, that'd be an eighth note. Um, so I could change it to four, which, so I'd have four sounds, four hi-hat sounds on every beat, which would be like a 16th note if I ran this. So this kind of makes it easier to visualize what the hi-hat sound is going to be instead of playing around with the sleep uh, value you just pass this number uh, and it's very easy to see so if the number is four you know you're going to hear four sounds on every beat so in terms of using this to make some trap hi-hats um, now there's a lot of things you can do as far as trap hi-hats are concerned if you're making a trap beat so this is just a very kind of rudimentary way to do it but one of the defining qualities of trap hi-hats is the sort of changing of subdivisions as as the song goes on or as the drum beat goes on so it's not just a steady stream of eighth notes or sixteenth notes that we get changes we get different subdivisions we get triplet sounds and different parts so what I'm going to do here is for the argument that I'm passing to this hats function I'm going to create a ring um, and so I can in that ring so maybe I'll do like a string of four so every number I put is basically going to be one beat so here I'd have four hi-hat sounds on a beat then four then four but then maybe here I'll add a six, and then I'll do four, I'll do eight, uh, I'll do four again, and then maybe 12. So I'm just going to do like an eight beat pattern here. And then I need to dot tick so I can iterate through this ring. So now um, let's listen to what we have here. So there you see now like the hi-hats just kind of change up their subdivisions depending on what I have here in this ring. Now I could go further. I could make this ring longer, or maybe do three here, I do eight here, maybe do like 16, I could do four, I could do four, I could do 24. So I'm just kind of throwing a bunch here. Uh, I kind of do like to keep track of how many. So this would be four beats. Uh, four beats, four beats, four beats. Okay, good. I just kind of like to keep things consistent with that. But now if I were to run this, so here, so I run through that quite a bit. So you could make some customized patterns here very easily using this. Um, but one more thing, if you don't mind leaving some things up to chance or some randomization to add it, what we could also do um, is instead of a dot tick, I could do a dot choose and it would choose one of these values. Now one thing we could do with that is we could start playing with probability and the the chance that it's going to be a certain subdivision. So to do that, I could include maybe like five fours, and then I do maybe two sixes, and then maybe an eight, and a 12, and a 24. Right, so there's gonna be more of a chance that, oh, and I need to end, sorry, I need to end with a dot choose there. So 
this means it's just going to choose one of these values each time through. And obviously, since there's more 4s, there's going to be a greater chance that it'll choose 4. So that'll give it maybe a bit more of consistency. But then there's also a chance, you know, it might choose this 24, it might choose this 12, this 8. There's a little more of a chance that it's going to choose a 6. So I could, you know, add the same number multiple times if I wanted to increase the probability that that number was going to get selected here. Now there's other data structures I could use here. I could use maybe a knit would probably be a better way to go about doing that. Uh, but I'm going to just sort of stick with this now just to kind of give you a better visual of, of the numbers that we have in this ring. All right, so I'm going to run it and let's see how it turns out. So you get the idea. So again, this is just a way to kind of add some randomization and play around with probability. Um, so obviously, if you're working in Sonic Pi, you have those kinds of options, which aren't really available for you in a regular DAW or digital audio workspace, um, where you would have to kind of program all the hi-hats exactly the way you want them. But in working with Sonic Pi, sometimes it's fun to sort of play around with randomization uh, and not necessarily know exactly what's going to happen, but at least set yourself up for some possibilities there. Uh, but that is the basic idea. So that's how we can kind of make a simple trap drum hi-hat pattern using this density function uh, by creating our own function here. Uh, so that is it. Obviously, this not all there is to making trap drums, but this could be a good start if that is something you are interested in doing. So I hope you enjoy it.